G'day, I'm Drew here from Google Productions, and today we're going to be looking at how to change a colored image fade into a black and white image. So you can download this footage from my website if you'd like and follow along, or do your own color grade for it, it's completely up to you. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Again, completely up to you. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just check our scopes here. So we'll just want to go up a little bit. Yep, and then we'll bring our blacks down just a little bit, and overall brightness just down a little bit. Uh, add a little bit more saturation in, and a little bit more contrast. That looks fine. Check our balance. Looking good. Blacks are good. So if your pick is not showing up, simply just right click on your image, show pick RGB value, or come across here and then choose it here. And that's it. And you want your whites to be an even number across. As you can see, they're really even there. Um, and you're looking for a high number. So 255 and below. And your blacks, you want to be above 6. And also matching. Or well, as close to. Alrighty, so we'll just add a little bit more saturation to this image. A little bit more contrast. And we'll just warm it up a little bit. So just come across here to the 2. And then just move your temperature to the right. And that'll warm up your entire image. So we've gone from here to here. So, I mean, not a huge difference, but enough. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is create a new node, a serial node. So Alt-S. And then this is where we're going to change this image to be black and white. So, so let's find a point where we want to start the black and white transition. So, looks like he's pretty happy, having a good day. I guess, not much emotion. Uh, looks at his phone. Oh, looks like he's got a bad message. Oh, shattering. And then we'll transition. So I'd say about here, his face looks like he's devastated. Well, as much as he can from that expression. So if you come down to here, this is where our keyframes are. If you see this little number here, this is two. And then this is your correction node, number two down here. So this number needs to match the node that you want to change. So number two, so add a keyframe here. And then we'll come across our saturation and just bring it down by like next to nothing. So we'll say 0.20. And then we'll come across to the end and then we'll bring the saturation all the way down. So now you have this transition. So it looks at his phone, devastating news. And as you can see, we're slowly desaturating over time. Shattering. Oh, bad news. Bad new bears. Okay, but to me, I feel like we're not really desaturated until the very end. So what we can do is expand our keyframe. So this little button here. And grab your keyframe and move it across like so, so then we can be desaturated earlier in the piece. So by this point here, we're completely desaturated. So let's say we want to be desaturated about here. So again, click on your keyframe, move it across a little bit, and there, that'll be desaturated. Could even start a little bit earlier maybe. So about here, so he gets his phone, as soon as he sees the message, then we start transitioning to black and white. So as you can see, nice color, phone rings or message, I guess it's a message. Looks at the phone and he starts getting the bad news. And as you can see, all the color is draining out. Devastated, absolutely devastated. Oh, what an actor. And then walks off the screen. So this technique is really great, not just for changing saturation, but of course you can change lighting. So if we were to make a lighting change here and say we're really bright and then by the end we want to be really dark, it's pretty much the exact or it is the exact same method. Um, this is really great for documentaries when the lighting does change a lot because it's really run and gun. So you're not going to have that consistent studio lighting. So as a colorist, you really want to make sure your lighting is even throughout. And this is such a handy tip. Again, I've used it so many times. All right, so that's the video for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's a good little trick to have. Next week, I think what we'll do is 
we use the same footage, but we'll isolate the skin tones and maybe we'll do some sort of crazy grade and I'll show you how to keep those skins looking natural. Again, you can download the footage from my website. So if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I've been Drew Hare from Gringo Productions and I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you.